renovated retirement with charlie jewett oh no i think i'm about to have another episode hey everybody in listening world this is charlie jewett from the renovating retirement podcast the movement it's not a religion but it's big uh we are cleaning up the retirement planning industry one episode at a time one family at a time one agent at a time if you're in the financial services industry and want to be a part of the solution not the problem. Uh, learn how to build the best retirement plan on the planet, uh, which is tested. Get in touch. Charlie at JewettWealth.com. C-H-A-R-L-I-E at J-E-W-E-T-T. Wealth, like wealthy, dot com. Now, I was recently in a review of different podcast shows. I was uh, called Bipolar, which I found really fun. I didn't realize singing chipmunk, song, chipmunk songs and doing Mr. T voices meant that one uh, was manic depressive or whatever bipolar actually means. But I now have a new, I don't know, diagnosis, uh, an, <laughs> a non-professional diagnosis from a fee-based financial advisor. I do have a podcast episode coming up on this inner interaction or sort of exchange with the person that said I was bipolar because in his review, he said the bipolar host of this podcast claims that he can beat any financial plan on the planet using just cash value life insurance. And then there's a one sentence or a one word sentence after that that just says seriously with a period. So I interacted with him. I don't really let people get away with stuff like that. Uh, as the financial services whistleblower, my job, self-appointed by the way, my job is to be the oversight and quality control for the entire company, whether agents want that or not, whether advisors want it or not. I decided I was going to provide that as a protection for consumers so you're not really allowed to hurt people and have me know about it and not say anything so I, I pushed back a little bit I said thank you for commenting on the the podcast and um, you know sharing your thoughts I appreciate your your I told him kind words but it's actually not that I believe I can beat every financial plan on the planet using just cash value life insurance I, I actually have and do beat every financial plan on the planet using the three tools I use, which is annuities, life insurance built the right way, and land banking. And he wrote back, well, because I actually invited him to, to test it, send over some of his financial plans. By the way, this guy charges money to people to tell them what to do. That's called fee-based financial planning. Um, I suggested that he send over some plans and let me demonstrate what I'm talking about. His answer was very telling, and that's why I'm going to do an entire episode on that, which is... His answer was, well, you don't know which plan was better until you get down the road 10, 15, 20, 30 years. What an awesome telling answer because the whole thing I've been fighting in this industry is if, if you don't know what you're going to, if you don't know the results you're going to receive, it's not a plan. It's just gambling. And that's what most advisors do. They stick you in stocks, bonds, and mutual funds because that's what pays them the way they like to be paid. Guys, the difference between being paid one time up front on an annuity or a life insurance policy um, or even land banking and getting paid every single month or quarter or year for the rest of your life while you manage somebody's money. Matter of fact, I just heard a commercial while I was walking the dogs. I just heard a commercial for Fisher Investments, which I thought was hilarious, where the guy says, um, you know, the play, the play actor says, well, aren't you guys just like every other advisors charging you know, fee commissions when you buy and sell positions and stocks for your, your uh, clients and the person supposedly representing Fisher Investments says, no, what makes us different is when our clients do well, we do well. Oh, okay, yeah, like that's half of the equation. When someone's portfolio goes up 20%, which by the way, it's 100% proven that money managers underperform the S&P 500 index. So you, you, it's one of the only industries where paying somebody to do it for you virtually guarantees you get worse results than if you did it yourself. Other industries like mowing your lawn, replacing electrical outlets, installing ceiling fans, fixing your car, pretty much every industry in the world, uh, you hire someone else to do it because they will do a better job than you, or at least they'll do the same job and save you time if you don't want to bother with the hassle. Money management, you know, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, Edward Jones, Merrill Lynch, Morgan Stanley, those types of companies, obviously Ken Fisher at Fisher Investments, those types of companies, it's the only industry where all of the data, all of the research points to the fact that you will hurt yourself if you hire those people. 
They underperform just buying the index without their help. And yet somehow can pitch it as when our clients do well, we do well also. Well, I mentioned that was half of the story. It is half the story. Uh, because fee-based money managers, if you do terribly, they still do okay. So yeah, if you do well, you grow it by, you know, they grow your money by 20%, which by the way, is not from their knowledge. It's not from the decisions they make. It's just that the market gave it to them for free and they try to steal the credit and make themselves look like heroes, which is silly. Uh, when the tide goes up, all the b boats go up with it. So if you say you're responsible for the tide going up, uh, you sound a little a little stupid, in my opinion. But when, you, when your money goes up 20%, their fees go up 20%. Oh, when our clients do well, we do well. Ooh, okay. How about when your clients do terribly and lose 20, 30, 40% of their money? So a year where you completely failed where you didn't see the market crash coming and didn't get your clients out of the market and go to cash, which would be the only reason to have a money manager, is if you're just going to take all the ups and all the downs, just do it without the fee. Do it without the extra baggage of some person telling you they're awesome and charging you fees. When the market goes down 20 30 40%, they still get paid. Their fee goes down 20, 30, 40%, but that's not horrible. That's not life changing. They're not going to be on skid row living off of welfare if they make 70 or 80% of what they made last year for doing absolutely nothing for you and professionally lying to you and hurting you for a living. living. Folks, Money management is a failed experiment if you still pay someone, if you still pay someone to gamble on your behalf. Now, I don't want to go to Vegas and have free drinks and buffets. That's not fun. I'll pay you to go lose my money, joker. If you still pay someone to do your gambling, when all the evidence proves that that just adds an extra negative 1% or 1.5% to your losses and takes it away from your gain years and does not give you a higher rate of return than if you just didn't use them in the first place and bought them. Look, guys, if you're addicted to the stock market and nothing that I've said in four years sways you away from that addiction, the fact that annuities have made more than the stock market for the last 19 years, the fact that cash value life insurance set up the right way has crushed spanked, beat the turds out of the stock market for the last 19 years. The fact that land um, averaged 24% for a 17-year period and now seems to be doing better since that study ended in 2012. The fact that all of the alternatives, which are all safer, by the way, I just mentioned three alternative investments where no one's lost any money in the entire history that we can track them, indexed annuities, indexed universal life insurance, and uh, the land banking in Antelope Valley through one company, there's not a single consumer investor who's lost a single dollar, not one, to a downturn in the market, and they've earned more rate of return than stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. If you're still paying somebody to gamble for you, you might as well go to work in a horse and buggy and when you get sick, have some doctor drill into your head and try to do bloodletting and let the blood out because that's the answer to sickness, right? You and your flat earth views, if you want, really want to go back and use outdated strategies that have been proven wrong, you know, why not have a doctor, you know, deliver your next baby without washing their hands? Because why? What does knowledge do for us? Who really cares? Obviously, I'm passionate about this. The market's close to all-time highs again with completely fake returns. The price-earnings ratios are higher now, way above dangerous levels. They're higher than they were before the dot-com crash of 2000 and 2001 that hurt one of my family members desperately, sent her back to work for 13 years. We're, it's a completely fake stock market that hasn't delivered in 20 years. And at the highest of highs, you still think being in it makes sense? Every day you don't sell means you buy. What do I mean by that? If you had new money in your life and you bought into a stock market that was at all-time highs, and if you look at the chart, it's just straight up from 2008 till now with a few little hiccups along the way. It basically straight up growth. Longest run up in all, of, all history. 
again nearing all-time highs, you say, you know what? I like to buy things when the price is higher than it's never, ever, ever been. I don't even drive. I wait for gas to be $5 a gallon before I'm willing to get into the game. Why? What is going on with this addiction to how people grew money from 1970 to 1999? Really? Sit down, have a quiet moment, and in the most respectful way, go, what is wrong with me? Why do I feel the need to do this? Why do I keep repeating the same behavior? Like, slap your wrist, you know, like like you've got a rubber band tied around your wrist and your veins are popping out and you're about to inject yourself with, I don't even, I know so little about drugs, I don't even know what people inject their arms with. You're about to shoot up, you know, and slap your arm, go, I got to have more of the market. I need more. I got to have, I cannot live without losing money and the rush of knowing that I might fail. Why? I mean, I kind of get it. Like, I, I don't work for other people. I don't enjoy having a boss. I've been self-employed for decades. I like the rush that I might make a ton of money this month or I might have a difficult month and need to supplement with my gig economy stuff that I do because I love being out and about and interacting and having the freedom of not having a boss. I kind of get it. But if somebody came along and said, well, without that risk, you could have even higher income than doing all of your entrepreneurial stuff. It would just pay you, you know, $300,000 a month to sit home and talk. I'd be like, okay, let's do that for a while. Well, it's boring. Okay, well, I'll supplement with some other things. The stock market is not a form of entertainment. You shouldn't be hurting yourself just because you want to have fun. You can do that, by the way, with a, with a fake account, with a mock account. Uh, you know, pretend day trading if you really want to. But all of that, which I didn't plan to say any of that because I don't ever plan for almost anything, just let it happen naturally as the spirit leads, so to speak. All of that introduction is actually to an episode about how the fact uh, about the fact that rate of return is not necessary. Having a large chunk of money or big accounts is not necessary to retire. Oh, Charlie, now you've lost your marbles. You actually might be bipolar. It's the first true thing that a fee-based financial advisor has ever said. No, I'm not bipolar. I haven't lost my mind, at least not that I've noticed or been diagnosed with. I haven't lost my mind. I did the research. I decided not to believe what my managers told me. I pushed back 16 years ago in 2005 when everyone said, well, the good thing to do if you really, really care about money and yourself is pay off your house, postpone taxes to a later date when you're going to be in the lower tax bracket, and use a diversified portfolio of trash, trash, and more trash because not all trash loses value at the same crappy level. Uh, no, I wasn't a lemming and didn't just say, yes, sir, I will do what you say and never question the intelligence of dumb people over the generations. I didn't do that. I pushed back. I studied. I did my own research and used my brain, for heaven's sakes. I used my brain and went and studied the industry and was like, well, why do I have to be in the stock market? Why do we postpone taxes to a later date when the country's in trouble? It doesn't make any sense to me. Who came up with the idea of postponing taxes to a later date? Oh, it was the IRS. Well, maybe it's not good for us. Maybe it's actually good for them. <laughs> what a novel idea. No. The IRS would suggest something that's good for them and not us. I don't know what accent that was, but it just comes out in my weirdities. Here's what's up. Rate of return is not necessary. This is part of a four-part series. Liquidity sucks. Safety is stupid. Rate of return is not necessary. And taxes are awesome. Obviously, each one is titled to sound a little bit shocking and to be the opposite of what we actually want and think is true. But you do not need rate of return to provide an incredible retirement for yourself, especially considering retirement is 100% about the replacement of income. Hey, what happens, Charlie, when I uh, stop working one day? Uh, your paycheck goes away, big boy. Okay, so what I need if my paycheck goes away uh, is a big, giant chunk of money that can go up and down, right? Um, no, what you need if your paycheck goes away is a, is a paycheck. So retirement planning is about a paycheck. Uh, 
that goes against my research. What I've been told by the uh, Edward Morgan Lynch guys is I got to save up you know, three, $3.2 million. They say, what's your number? And then that's my number. It's $3.2 million. I got six bucks. I've been putting away three cents a week. Um, that's not going to help you much. Even having the $3.2 million with Edward Morgan Lynch isn't going to help you because they don't know how to do income. And stocks, bonds, and mutual funds are the absolute worst, most failed income-producing tool on the planet, big boy. Um, you go against everything that everybody says. I, I know. I know. Because everybody said the world was flat once. And then someone who was right came along and said it was round. So I'm okay. I can be unpopular during my generation as long as the next generation doesn't preach lies or live in the world of deception anymore, thinking that somehow the stock market... Guys, guys, stock market made almost 14% for 29 years, 70 to 99. From 20 to 2019, made 6.01. Over a 30-year period, if you put $100,000 into something making 6%, over 30 years, you end up with five hundred seventy-five grand. Making 14%, that same 100000 over the same 30 years would turn into $5 million bucks. Oh, but we can do the same things our parents did, Charlie, like retire and, t- and put leave our money in stocks, bonds, and mutual funds with somebody charging me a fee and try to take 4% out because my guy told me that. My girl, the girl with the, the water bottles with my name on it and the really nice girl suit, whatever those are called, lady suit things, and then she has a good office, which obviously tells me she's smart and knows what she's talking about. She said I could take 4%. I understand she did because she's a criminal. The entire industry is full of criminals. They don't even get math right, you guys. This industry <laughs> this industry is about someone doing two things. Providing accurate math, showing you how numbers work, how much you should save, what it compounds at, and what income it will turn into. Retirement's always been about income replacement. It's... The job of the professional is to provide accurate numbers, which they don't do. Average rate of return is a farce. Um, During times where the market went up 13.78% over a 29-year period, you could not even take out a withdrawal rate, anything close to that, even though that's a real rate of return. It has nothing to do with how much income you can have. Shocker that they don't tell you that. So the job is to provide accurate math for you and show you your options that's the entire job of a financial advisor and what do 99.9 percent of advisors who are professionally paid to do this whether they are series 65 money managers whether they are stockbrokers, whether they're insurance agents doesn't matter 99.999 99.999 go out as long as you want to percent of the professionals in the industry that charge you money lie about the math, whether it's on purpose or through ignorance. They don't have the math to provide for you what the markets actually make, uh, what's safe to take as an income, why you should never, ever, ever take an income stream off of uh, stocks, bonds, and mutual funds or any account that can go that can lose money. And they hide your options, either through immorality or ignorance. They don't... <laughs> Do you guys understand there's companies that you could work for that as an employee working for these money management companies where you would recognize the name and I'm not going to say it, complete brand name, everyone would recognize it. If you work there and they find out that you get an insurance license, that you lose your job, you're not allowed to talk to people about managing their money if you also have an insurance license at this particular company because what you are supposed to push, you stupid little slave, you as their slave are supposed to push the high uh, referral fee mutual funds. You're supposed to push the mutual funds that they reveal on their revenue sharing disclosure, the revenue sharing agreement. You're supposed to push the mutual funds where they get the largest kickbacks. You're supposed to hurt people for a living. If you're a money manager in the United States of America, your job is to hurt people for a living and make sure they don't find out what I'm teaching. Your job as a money manager is to charge fees for unnecessary work and hope to God nobody finds my show. How does anybody sleep at night in this industry? Seriously. I sleep like a baby. 
telling the truth is very relaxing. Being called a bipolar for telling the truth, eh, okay. Maybe that means that person has an illness and doesn't know how to see clearly. Uh, four plus four is eight. He's bipolar. All right, I'm not sure where to go with that. Thank you for your feedback. You don't even need money to have a retirement plan. I'm going to prove that. Listen, I'm going to prove it. Let me just start with three examples of how you do not need a nest egg to retire. Retirement is about income. So if you have income coming in after you leave your job or business and stop taking an income, surprise, surprise, retirement's always been about income, then you're going to be fine. So here's three examples why rate of return or growth, 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 you know, I got to gamble and make more money. Here's, here's three examples where rate of return is not even necessary. One, Social Security. <clears throat> okay, this is interesting. They take money from us. I wish, personally, as a self-employed professional, that this was optional. I wish that I could take that much money out of my paycheck, manage it myself, put it into the tools that actually work, <laughs> put it into tools that would give me 5, 10, 15 times more income at retirement than the Social Security program is going to give us as they give it back to us on their schedule. But Social Security... Your Social Security account has no account balance at all. There is no rate of return. Now, there's how much does it go up if I wait from age 62 to 63, which I believe is 7.32% unless something has changed. How much goes up for each year I wait between full retirement age, generally around 66 or 67, and 70, the latest I could turn it on or the latest we'd want to wait. That's usually 8%. So there's a simulated kind of rate of return when you wait for... By the way, Social Security is an annuity program. It's just not with an insurance company. It's with a much larger company called the United States of America, if you want to call it a company. You know, what's backing this money? Well, just the promises of the United States of America and how mad every person would get if they lowered Social Security. That's all. Social Security has no account. You can't call up Social Security Administration and say, how much money I got in there? Can I take it out in a lump sum? Can I have 10% of it? Can I, you know, How much did it go up last year when the market went up? How much did my account go up? There is no account. The Social Security program is about income. Retirement has always been about income. Gosh, I hope this is getting through. Retirement is not about saving up two, three, four million $4 million and then continuing to risk it with your silly joker broker because they're ignorant or immoral and don't tell you that stocks, bonds, and mutual funds are the worst place to have the money. Go back to the very beginning of my podcast in 2016. You'll find a podcast called Why Are You Still in the Fast Lane When You've Already Passed the Tractor or something like that. You take risks, to, you take strategic risk to gain something, and when you've gained it, you eliminate the risk. You get into the wrong lane on a two-lane road to pass the slow tractor. You're literally heading head-on at oncoming traffic. And when you have passed the tractor, you move back over into your lane out of danger. I've, I mean, I've built 2,000 financial plans. I've reviewed, I don't know how many thousands or tens of thousands. And all I see, I mean, seriously, all I see is people who have accumulated the assets they need. Some people haven't saved enough. By the way, here's what's funny. If you have not saved enough assets in your accounts to retire the way you want to, you have not even reached the point where you should consider stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. You don't even have enough money to cover your paycheck at retirement, and you're gambling with your balance? Are you kidding me? What immoral, confused um, industry told you that before you could even retire, before you've taken care of goal number one in retirement, which is a paycheck for life, what we're going to suggest is you go use the riskiest investments on the planet, which are securities. They might go up, they might go down, the companies may even go out of business. How much is Enron stock worth today, folks? How much of the how many of the companies inside of the S&P 500 are we going to see in the news like Enron one day? I'm not a doomsdayer. I'm not saying it's going to be 70% of them. I'm saying when you choose to 
you know, something that can go up or down. That choice is not conservative. That's aggressive. That's gambling. What money should you gamble with when you go to Las Vegas? The money you need for your mortgage? You know, if you have $3,000 in the bank and that's all you have to your name and your mortgage is $3,000 and it's due in 17 days and you go to Las Vegas with all your buddies, should you gamble your $3,000? Ask 100 financial advisors and 100 regular people and they would say, no, you should not. Uh, why? Why shouldn't you do that? What, what's the guiding principle for all of us to see the light? Um, you need it for rent. Therefore, it's not available for gambling because if you lose it, you suffer greatly. Oh, gosh, it's so obvious that after you show me like that, my Joker Broker makes a convincing argument that, uh, that gambling's the answer to every problem in the world. Matter of fact, my wife and I were having problems. He told me to buy more mutual funds. It, fix every, it you know, fixes everything. So I just I did, and, and she still seems mad at me, but I... I gotta listen to my Joker Broker because aren't they like Jesus? Don't they kind of know everything? The, the the gods of the world. Yeah, lie for a living. Gods of the world. <clears throat> really interesting, folks. If you don't have enough money to live off of for the rest of your life with the paycheck that you that would pay your bills and pay the lifestyle you want, you have not even reached the point where you have a dollar in your life that you can afford to consider putting in the stock market. It is a terrible tool for growing money unless it's extra money that you can afford to lose. It underperforms the safe investments. It does not provide income. It does not provide safe income at any exciting level. 2.8% to 4% is not exciting. You are going to think you have to work till 80, 90, 150 years old if you use the stock market model of, oh, maybe I can grow my money at 6 and then switch to a 4% distribution rate because my stupid broker said so. No. I'm going to go ahead and trust math over humans basically 100% of the time. So back to my point. This entire, I should just call this episode the rabbit trail because I'm almost never on point. That's fine. Maybe I'm bipolar and that guy was right. That's got to be the answer to what it is. Four plus four is eight. You're bipolar. Social security has no balance. There's no rate of return. It's just an arrangement. It's an income arrangement. Oh gosh, where have I heard of income arrangements? I think they call those annuities. Isn't that right, Charlie? Uh, Yes, they are. Here's what's funny. You guys have, that have listened to lots of my episodes, <clears throat> you know, if you've been listening for three or four years or going back to the beginning and kind of binged on it, right? Um, you will know that I talk about annuities and I do not put all money inside of annuities. I kind of like money that's trapped inside of pre-tax investments to put it into annuities because what are retirement accounts about? They're about income. Uh, why don't we take it out and put it into tax-free strategies because you'd have to pay all the taxes right now. Can we do strategic conversions, strategic distributions, or strategic Roth conversions? Try to keep it at 12, 22, 24%? Yes, we can over time. But generally speaking, um, I'm going to use annuities for retirement accounts. And then for clean, pure, after-tax money, I'm not. Well, Social Security is an annuity. I don't know anyone, literally zero people, that hate their guaranteed income annuity. I don't know anyone that hates their pension. I don't know a single human being that hates the fact that Social Security shows up every single month and that there is no account. No one hates the paycheck. They might hate the part where there's no account. But just understand, you don't need rate of return to live. If Social Security was $10,000 a month, most of you would be fine. And there's no rate of return on that. So you don't need rate of return. That's one example. What's a second example? Now let's get down to the needy greedy. I believe in science. Guys. Buying an annuity, so purchasing a pension for yourself, the exact same companies that our parents and grandparents drooled over the pensions that we used to have. Can we do a little bit of a review because I can't help myself? Employers used to offer this thing called defined benefit plans. Ooh, Charlie, that sounds really nice. It is nice. I like it. Defined benefit plan. What is defined? Well, the benefit. Hmm. What's the benefit in an employer-based retirement account? It is the income when you quit your job. It is the retirement income. Wait, Charlie, is retirement about income instead of growing money to a big fat pile? Uh, 
yeah, I'm only at 40 minutes of saying that and four years of saying that, but yes, random voice pretend other human that I'm talking to. Yes, it's about income. Oh, I get it now. It only took 140 hours of you. When you buy an annuity through an insurance company, which is exactly how your parents and grandparents defined benefit plans came into existence, that paycheck that has allowed all the generations prior to us to to live after they stopped working was their company basically buying a single premium immediate annuity from a large insurance company that has you know no history of coming close to going out of business safer than every bank safer than every brokerage account okay so pensions or annuities interesting the difference today when they say you're not oh we don't give you a defined benefit it's defined contribution you can put in up to this much into roths and this much into iras and this much into your 401k and this much into your 403b we're not going to tell you what you can end up with or give you a planning tool we're just going to tell you how much you can put in cross your fingers and hope it works out we just wash our hands of the risk of taking care of you and it's on you and on the market not on us all right, so you save up a bunch of money. You have $500,000 sitting in a retirement account when you retire. What can you do with it? You can gamble in the stock market and be a fool. That's fine. Or you could buy a pension. You could live in retirement the way that people have for generation after generation after generation. And you could do it the way that everybody loves. Nobody hates guaranteed income. Trust me, nobody hates guaranteed income. Trust me. I'm going to say it again. Nobody, nobody, 100% of the people I've met love guaranteed income and nobody hates a paycheck that shows up every single month like clockwork, whether you run out of money or not. Nobody hates their social security. Nobody hates their pension. No one has ever hated their pension. People love income. It's what allows you to live the lifestyle you want, take the trips you want, buy the gifts you want, eat at the restaurants you want. Oh, but isn't the answer to everything rate of return? No, because when you buy an annuity, a lifetime annuity, the arrangement with the insurance company, besides the fact that your income is going to be way higher than if you try to take some mystery income off of a portfolio, uh, the fact that the guaranteed income is higher, like four or five, six percent instead of two point eight to four, you know, and the four or five or six is guaranteed, and the two point eight to four is a is a guess. You could run out of money. So the higher income is awesome, <clears throat> but here's the arrangement. If the market doesn't go well, and behind the scenes, the annuity doesn't grow, but you're taking such a high income that, oh my gosh, the balance is going down. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, the balance goes down. One day, the balance of your annuity hits zero. <gasps> and what happens? Is it like if your broker account hits zero and you stop getting your income and now you're completely screwed? Nah. Is it like you're living off of money in the bank? And once you're out, you're out, and you're, you're totally in trouble? No. With today's annuity arrangements, the insurance company carries all of the risk of you living a long time. As a matter of fact, a lot of them have increasing income arrangements. Even after your account hits zero and you are out of money, you continue to get the same exact high paycheck for the rest of your life or a paycheck that goes up. When the market goes up, even if you have zero dollars to gain interest in the market, the arrangement with the insurance company is if the index we're tracking goes up 10%, your income goes up 10%. Hold on a second. Time out, Santa Claus. That sounds too good to be true, you fat bearded fool. No, it's not too good to be true. Reporting the truth is always easy. Don't be fooled by these joker brokers and captive insurance agents that are like, Man, it's so hard to find the truth and tell truth to people because it takes work and lowers my paycheck. It's so hard. Somebody get a, a symphony of violins because I, I want help crying over my life. It's really hard to tell the truth when your paycheck goes down and it takes extra time where I can't be on the golf course. Someone cry me a river. It's actually not hard to tell the truth, you guys. It's much easier to go, um, here's how it is. Hello. You know, two things, <laughs> two realities could change the entire retirement planning universe if anybody cared to listen. With annuities, you still get increasing income when your account hits zero. Okay, that means they're in a, a world of their own different than every other income tool on the planet. Well, that's cool. 
And uh, money inside of cash value life insurance, when you take it for income, you can take about a 9 10%. So if you have a million dollars, you can take out ninety to $100,000 and have it last for the rest of your life until you're 120 years old, if it just makes the illustrated rate, which is lower than the real rate of return, so it's conservative already. Oh my gosh, Charlie, how could that even possibly be when people say you can't even take 4% anymore? Well, there's no opportunity cost. Annuities are the only place you can take an income off of an account that's hit zero, and the income goes up when the market does well. That's nice. And cash value life insurance built the right way is the only place you can take 9 or 10% of your account out and plan on having it last till you're 120. And every time you take a dollar out of the policy, it does not lower your account by a dollar. You, there is no opportunity cost. <gasps> wait, wait, Charlie. I'm having an epiphany, and let me just ground myself and sit down here. You mean when I take money out of my stock portfolio, my account goes down, I don't earn as much interest, I'm killing some sheep, and they don't have babies? Yes. Do I have to say it every week? Yes. Opportunity cost means if you take $50,000 out of a retirement account, and you use it to pay your bills, you have $50,000 less earning interest next year. If the market goes up 10 and you had taken 50000 out to pay bills, it costs you the $5,000 you were supposed to earn on the 50. Does it make sense? Yes. Where's the only place that any American U.S. human being can put their money to grow it at stock-like returns or better, never pay taxes on the growth, and never, never, ever, not even once from the day you retire till the day you die, never once will you reduce the size of your account no matter how much income you take out of it. That one and only place is cash value life insurance built the right play. Charlie built the right way. Charlie, you just sound so passionate. I don't understand. I don't know if every road on the highway led to a cliff and people died in burning flames and one of them led to an ice cream stand. I'd be passionate about it as well, no matter how many stupid people put up billboards saying that driving into a fiery death was good because that's how we've done it for decades. I don't care about the traditions. Just the truth. Social Security needs no rate of return. It's an income arrangement. Awesome. Buying an annuity? If you buy an annuity today, and it has an income rider on it, literally, listen close, literally the arrangement could be this. And let's say you give them $300,000. And they say, okay, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, we're going to track the market for you. There's an index called the blah, blah, blah index. It might be the S&P 500. It might be Morgan Stanley Dynamic Allocation. It might be um, PIMCO. It might be whatever, Barclays, whatever. It's a it's a group of stocks, bonds, and mutual funds or stocks. They're going to measure something. All right, cool. We're going to measure the index, and if the market goes up and you make a ton of money, you'll make a ton of money, and your accounts will grow and your income goes up. That's awesome. If the market stays flat for the rest of your life, you don't lose any money. Okay, that's cool. If the market stays flat and you take an income, your account could go down, but if it hits zero, you, you keep getting your income. Well, I kind of like that. That's pretty cool. So the market goes up, I get raises. Market stays flat, I get the income I planned on market goes down, I run out of money, I still get the income I planned on. Why doesn't everybody love this? Is there any way to fail? No, there's absolutely no way to fail. You know exactly what your income is going to be. And inside of these, sometimes <laughs> they'll even say, give us $300,000. And if your account doesn't grow, we'll keep track of another number, a fake number, just like the way Social Security income is calculated, not on a real account, but a fake number. We'll, we'll use a fake account, a benefit base. Uh, what's that? What's, I can't remember what PIV stands for something premium, I don't even know, PIV with Allianz is another shadow account, right? We'll, we'll keep track of a fake number that even if your 300000 never goes up, the market never goes up again for the rest of your life, uh, we'll compound the fake number by 65 or 7% and track that fake number at 7%, you know, 10, 11 years later, your 300 is worth 600 and we'll say, you can live off of that fake number. You can take an income. You can take 4 or 5% of the 600000 even though you only have 300 You can live like a king even though the market didn't give you the money, because we just guarantee it. That's what we do. That's what we've been doing for hundreds and hundreds of years as insurance companies is pension planning. And you go, well, that sounds too good to be true. Well, well I'm sorry you feel that way. You know, There's a lot of things that are too good to be true in the United States or sound too good to be true, but they, they happen to be true. So Social Security and buying 
a pension just like <laughs> our parents and grandparents lived off of pensions and absolutely loved it, buying the same types of pensions that companies used to buy for us in defined benefit plans, but now we use our defined contribution plan, we save the money up, and then we buy the pension and can actually shop for the best one. We can compare them, which is great. Neither one of those requires the market to ever go up again for the rest of your life. You do not need rate of return to provide income. You don't need rate of return to provide income. Please, please fight back a little bit as your cult leader, joker, broker, money manager, I want to charge you a fee so I can play golf. Just shut up and don't ask questions. Advisor lies to you. Fight back just a little bit. Listen, if you still pay somebody to manage your money, look them in the eye and say, you work for me. There's eight billion people on the planet. Look them right in the eye. I'm pointing right at a wall right now and you guys can't see me. You point right at them and you look at them. And you go, every single quarter, every single year, you will now prove to me with irrefutable numbers, you will prove to me that paying you a fee and having you gamble for me, I make more than the S&P 500 index. And you look them right in the eye and you say, if you cannot do that, get the bleep out of my life, you criminal. Thank you for your service, but I believe you to be either majorly deceived or a liar. And if you ever want to repent, here's Charlie Jewett's podcast. Call him up. He will fix you up real quick. If this was a mistake and it's not immorality, it was just ignorance, you were mistakenly stupid because you didn't study and didn't do your job, and you manage money because you haven't seen the numbers, you haven't taken the professional time to go actually do the research. If somehow you're innocent in this, Mr. Joker Broker, who's been managing my money, here's Charlie's number. He will fix you so you stop hurting people. But there's 8 billion people on the planet, and you will prove to me that with your fee, you're beating the stock market where you have some reason to be in my life. If not, you are out of my life. Stand up a little bit. Money managers are not doctors. It's not like they went to school for 12 years and did three years of residency or whatever the heck it takes to become a doctor. And they know this thing that you could never possibly know on your own. Like you don't tell your brain surgeon how to do your brain surgery. It's not even close to that. We have an entire industry where one company runs commercials saying they have over a trillion dollars under management. You understand what... <laughs> high-level criminal activity it is to have a trillion dollars under management and a disclosure on your website saying we're going to rip you off and only put you in the mutual funds that give us the highest kickback because that's legal. I call it criminal, but it's actually it's perfectly legal to hurt people in retirement in our country. A trillion dollars under management they have. And if people didn't use them, they'd make more money? that all the evidence, it's just ridiculous. What's the third place that you can provide the income you need or a giant nest egg and rate of return is 100% unnecessary? Well, Social Security, one of the foundations of American retirement, well, that's cool. Buying an annuity, the foundation of American retirement for all generations before us, back you know, until back in the day when there was no financial products, it was just sheep and goats was the foundation. <laughs> All right, well, that's cool. Well, what was the foundation for all the generations before us? It was pensions, annuities. Okay, well, here's the foundation of an American retirement planning, Social Security and annuities. No, no, Charlie, that's not what my joker broker says when he takes me to play golf with him that I'm paying for somehow. He tells me the foundation of American retirement is mutual funds. Well, I, I know they do, whether it's a he or a she. I know. I, why do you think I started the podcast in 2016, said the industry needs a spanking and it's criminal and needs to be teared, torn down and rebuilt from scratch? Because the foundation of American retirement is Social Security and pensions, two different types of annuities. And you've been convinced by the snake oil salesman that the foundation of American retirement is paying somebody a fee while they gamble your money away. Stupid. What else could you do and make rate of return completely irrelevant, unnecessary? Buy insurance on your parents. Wait, what? Let me say it again. 
it's the basic legacy plan, what every wealthy family that we study that has an advisor worth their salt is doing. Buy insurance on your parents. Um, Charlie, uh, uh, we're critically Caucasian and there's no love in white American families. And I, if I said I want to buy insurance on my dad, he'd be afraid I'd kill him. I get it. I get it. I'm chronically Caucasian and I grew up in this industry where, not industry, I grew up in this uh, culture where it does seem like there's more, uh, by the way, this is my opinion. You guys can send me a lot of hate mail, that's fine. I now have spent uh, four years deeply rooted in Mexican culture, spent a lot of time studying Asian countries and different things over my 48 years in a search for happiness and what religion is true and what is life all about and all the big questions. And my, my personal research has led me to believe that Caucasians seem to have less traditions. <laughs> Sun, there's no Sunday dinner. There's no this. There's no that. The tradition is pull your car into your garage and shut the garage and don't talk to people and try not to watch too much TV because that somehow is a sin or whatever. Um, I am saying from my own personal experience I don't have people from other cultures have the fear that, well, if I take out, why would my parents let me take out insurance on them? Then they'd be afraid I'd kill them. Okay, well, your family doesn't work for this strategy. Other families are like, well, of course I do that. That's the only gift I can, this is a gift of love. I'm the only person that can give that gift of love, letting them use my life. I'm ranting, let me shut up. If you buy insurance on your parents, you are leaving yourself a guaranteed inheritance. You know what the size is going to be. You buy a $2 million second to die policy, on your parents, so it covers both mom and dad, it's cheaper that way, and you're going to leave yourself $2 million, what does the market need to do? Nothing. The market could go down for the rest of your life. It's not even correlated to the market. You just get $2 million when they pass away. So, well, Charlie, when are they going to pass away? I don't even know when. I know you don't know when, because I basically just taught you how to eliminate the risk of the market and add a different risk. It's the when risk. Like, what if I want to retire at 62 and my folks aren't dead yet? Well, don't kill them. Wait. Have patience. There's, believe it or not, there's plenty of ways to survive for four, five, six, seven, ten years if you happen to know that $2 million is coming income tax-free at some point. But the reality of legacy planning, why wealthy families do this, why they always keep big, giant insurance policies on the oldest living members of the family is because every time the oldest living members of the family pass away, there's a giant influx of cash, of tax-free money to the family bank, and every generation, the family, whoever's living, should get wealthier. That's how the wealthy families do it. You use the tools for what they're good at. What does life insurance do better than any tool on the planet? It ignores stock market returns and gives a giant guaranteed chunk of money that transfers income tax-free to the heirs. Okay, so if you buy a million dollars of insurance on your parents, you put your retirement accounts in an annuity that gives you a guaranteed $5,000 a month income or more, and you've got your Social Security coming in, and the market goes down every single year for the rest of your life, there's not one positive year from today until the day you die, what is your retirement going to look like? It's going to look like your Social Security you're supposed to get, you're going to get the income from the annuity like clockwork, and then when your parents pass away, you're going to get exactly the chunk of money that you purchased. Now you should be going, well, what's all the, why, why do we talk so much about rate of return? Why is CNN only, why does the stock market dominate American news? Because it's good for advisors. Guys, there's, there's just no other way to say it. The rate of return is not necessary. But convincing you that rate of return is necessary is the most lucrative thing an advisor could ever do. And but the, the gimmick is almost up. I mean, it is starting, there's starting to be article after article after article come out about how you shouldn't postpone taxes to a later date. The 401k programs have failed. Maybe you shouldn't use a 401k. Uh, maybe all the liars were actually wrong about life insurance. <laughs> Here's what's funny. I will publish materials literally calling people out by name, Todd Langford, and their articles, um, 10 things, you know, 10 reasons not to use index universal life insurance or whatever article Todd Langford wrote, I will call people out by name and challenge them to debate me in person. And they will not show up and debate me. Garrett Gunderson 
And Todd Langford lied to the American public, lie, and they lie over and over and over again. And I don't hate everything Garrett Gunderson had put out. He just needs to repent of what he said about Todd Langford and not standing up to the criminal activity and the criminal statements that Todd has made in his articles, 10 Things You Should Hate About Cash Value Life Insurance. If you professionally lie to the American public and someone stands up to you and shows you you lied and you don't take the article down and continue to lie, you're demonic. You're part of the problem. How can you sleep at night? And I've had people call me and say, well, Todd seems like a pretty good guy. If Todd's a good guy, he needs to come on the show and repent. To my face, first, for not responding to my invitation to help American retirees, but for being a coward and having his assistant say, oh, we don't actually debate because we've found that debates don't help people. Everyone just keeps their original opinion. Okay. So there's not a single human being on the planet who has ever been helped by any debate And if it's not opinion, like let's have a debate about whether onions or tomatoes taste better. Okay, criminal wimp. You can say, I don't want to have a debate because we found that people that like tomatoes just stick with tomatoes. People that like onions stick with onions. When Todd, listen. When you lie to the people I care about, about mathematics, when you lie about something measurable, when you make up stories about whole life that aren't true, Mr. Liar, when you make up stories about universal life insurance because you're ignorant and don't know how to design them yourself, you haven't taken the time to master your profession, Mr. Liar, Mr. Coward, when you lie to the people I care about and I call you out, you only have two responses. Prove you're a lying, criminal, ignorant fool and hide from the debate, which is what you've chosen. And then Garrett Gunderson praises your article, so you're now in the same camp. Criminal fools. And by the way, if you hear this podcast and come on the show and repent, I'll just come back and remove this part. Or I'll put a little blurb in here that says, by the way, Todd and Garrett did the right thing. They acted like real men, real professionals, came on the show learned, they actually humbled themselves, learned from the people that know more than they do, the people that caught them lying and taught the world that they were liars and they were wrong. If it's just a mistake, come on the show and fix it, big boy. But if you are a criminal, then all of us who are gaining more popularity than you are going to continue to expose your criminal lies. The most prof... Listener, listener, My job is to protect you. I'm the self-appointed quality control representative of the financial services whistleblower. I am the person that financial advisors don't want in their lives. And I said, I don't care. I am that anyway. If you're going to hurt people, you're going to have to answer to me and my entire audience. That's the facts. And I had zero listeners four years ago. Now I have more than zero. We'll leave it at that. Are we making a dent in the industry? (laughs) Yeah. I just, okay, you, you just watch. Watch what happens over the next five years. Yes, we're making a dent in the industry. Yes, we're training people every single day, an army of truth tellers to go out and spank the Garrett Gundersons and Todd Langfords of the world who lie and hide behind their organizations. Rate of return is not necessary. It's just the most profitable thing that any advisor could ever convince you you need. Well, if you're sick of the stock market, get a divorce. It's an unnecessary tool. Nobody needs the stock market. Your social security plan, buying an annuity, and buying insurance on your parents, <laughs> wash your hands. Wipe your hands clean of the market. You don't need risk anymore. You already passed the tractor. Get back over in your lane and don't drive head on towards cra- traffic anymore. You already gained what the market can give. If, if the market gave you growth and you are sitting on accounts that are as high as they've ever been because of the stupid coronavirus run-up of over 40% from the bottom... If this fake run-up that the government is putting on probably to to make give Trump more chance to get reelected, um, I don't think Trump's going to let the market crash until the election. We'll see. I don't know if he has that much control, but it sure looks like that's what's going on. If your accounts are pumped full of cash, you've passed the tractor. You've used risk for what's it worth. Get out of the other lane. Stop taking risk. 
go to a true retirement plan, which is income-based. Does that make sense? You don't need rate of return. Does that mean I never use tools where rate of return, having a good year is better than having a bad year? It doesn't mean that. I am make, I am exaggerating to make a point that you never, ever, ever need the market to go up and you're going to be just fine as long as you have a real compounding rate of return that doesn't experience losses and then six, seven years of recovery to get back to where you already were. I'm going to shut up because this is enough. I've called you out again, Todd Langford, Garrett Gunderson, for your lies. You're welcome to come on the show. I'm very humble. You will hear me apologize in front of my entire audience. If I have said something that's not true, I'm just asking you guys to have the minimum human male or female quality of humility be a man, be a woman, stand up to someone telling you that you've lied or you've made a mistake, be humble, come on the show, and let's get to the truth because the only thing that sets people free is the truth. Oh, guys, I got to shut up. You know why I do this? Because I think you people are the absolute amazingest bestesses. You're the bestesses. You people are the best SS. Renovate. Retirement. With Charlie Jewett. That's all, folks.